Shut up and sit down. Hi, I'm Peter McTavish and welcome back to another DCG tutorial. This one, uh, we're going to do the structural forms question from 2015 paper. So that's uh, section C, question C2. So as always, I'm not going to read through the question, we we'll just get into it. So part A, draw the given plan using the same number of elements in each direction on the surface of the crisp as shown. So if you look at the plan and also notice the scale, scale is 2 is to 1, so it's in large scale, they even tell you there in brackets. So our major axis in the plan is 75 millimeters in length so our major axis on the sheet is going to be uh, a radius our major axis is going to be double that so the half the major axis is going to be 75 and then you're just going to use your 35 degree line to uh, find part point d and draw your ellipse so i'm going to do the concentric circles method i'm going to make it sure it's start nice and low down here on the page making sure i've loads of room Okay, so that's the plan of it almost done. We just have to uh, put in the same amount of elements on the surface like is shown in um, your plan there in the question. Okay, so let's put in what's given. So let's join uh, A to B, B to C, C to D and so on. Now it said to use the same amount of elements, so we see there that there is uh, five elements along our AB line. Sorry, AD. And also the AB line is divided into five. So I'm going to divide the AB line into five equal parts, get my uh, sections here between A and B, and then put them in the same angle at your 35 degrees. I might fast forward through this. Okay, so that's the plan done. Now let's project do, and that's part A. So part B then, project the given elevation from the plan. So we're projecting our points up. So let's project uh, our points A, B, C, and D up first. Uh, put in those four, or those three points, label them, and then we can go through putting in the curvature. What we're doing is using our elements here to draw a portion, draw the curve up here in elevation. So I'll go through one quickly and then we might fast forward to some of the other ones. So I might put this element in with a different colour. And what we 
we're doing is projecting up where it crosses the AD line, which we have in the elevation, and where it crosses the BC line here, and we're joining them together. So it crosses the, I might put them in with a separate colour as well, just so it stands out. There's a lot of lines in this drawing. So, where our element crosses the AD line and the BC line, let's project them up to the elevation. Now, what I'm putting in is the, the top curve, the curve going from A up to uh, B and D here initially. So, you're joining that element. So, this is where it cuts the BC line, this is where it cuts the AB line, join them. and extend out as well, and just on one side. Now to show where that point finishes or stops on the curve on the outside, outer side here of the hyperbola, you are projecting it up from the curve in plan. And that gives you a point on the curve here. So you're projecting this point straight up to the AB line. Sorry, AD. You're projecting the other end of it up to the um, BC line, which is here. You join them and extend out till it reaches the curve. You can do the same now with the rest of the elements here. So this is a second element here where it crosses. AD, project up to AD, where it crosses BC, project up to BC, join, extend, and where it hits the curve here, project that up, and you'll get another point in the curve. Now I'm, going to, I'm going to focus on the left-hand side here first, because it's symmetrical, so I want to find one side and project it over to the uh, right-hand side. So, a quick recap on that before I draw on the curve. So, the elements going along our surface A, B, C, D. And what we do is show where they cut the A, D line and the B, C line. So, here it cuts the first one, it cut there on A, D. Second one it cuts over on the right hand side here on B, C. We join them together, extend it, and brought up the point where that element hits the curve to show where the curve uh, or that line stops on the curve, that element stops on the surface. Bring that up, that's our point. Here is our range of points then for the rest of the elements, and just freehand lightly join uh, this point D, join them down to A through all the points. So I'll draw in lightly first and then go over its ramp. Now, without having to do the same on the other side, I'm just going to project the points across and draw the rest of the curve on the right hand side. Notice also what your elements have given you by projecting them up to the elevation. All these straight lines, as they meet, are giving you points on the bottom curve. So we have our bottom curve here. I'll mark that in with green dots. So this is our height. And we draw the bottom portion of the curve uh, lightly first initially and then going over it strong. the elevation and plan done of our Pringle, so parts A and B of the question. Next it says, uh, part C, show the curvature of the surface 
when intersected by a vertical cutting plane passing through points B and D. What it's asking you there is that a vertical cutting plane, so a plane, or basically a straight line going through from point B to D, cutting straight through here, you want to show the curvature from point B over to point D through that surface there. So as soon as it's a vertical, cut, vertical cutting plane and it's going straight through BD, in order to show the curvature, basically we have to do an end view. Because it's vertical, it's cutting straight through B and D here. So you'll see it as a straight line there. I might put that in actually with red just to show. So you're going to show the curvature along the line BD here. The broken red line represents the vertical cutting plane. Same thing in elevation, you're going to show the basically along here. So what we're going to do is going to put in an end view. We're going to project our points from the uh, elevation over here to the left hand side. Uh, actually, maybe, let's see if we have enough room. I'm going to end up going off the sheet that side and probably the same on the other side. Let's have a look. Okay, so room on the right. But I'm just looking at the question and it says that uh, in part D it says draw the plan and elevation of the shortest distance between the two skew lines A, B and C, D. So we're looking at A, B and C, D. And from skew lines, you know, you have to do an make a plane of them, get an auxiliary view where they are parallel. In this case, they are. And then project your auxiliary view. And our auxiliary view for A, actually maybe might get away with going down to the bottom left. So let's do our end view up here to the right, we have room instead of adding on the sheet. So I'm projecting points A, B, C and D from the, um, actually just point B and D, from the plan, doing an end view. Okay, so what we're doing is showing where uh, what we're going to do is project points. So that vertical cutting plane is cutting through the curvature of the piece along our elements. So we're projecting where the elements meet on that vertical cutting plane. So in this case, you're meet, the two elements are meeting at this point here, here, and at the center. Then for the elevation, then those corresponding points are where the two elements meet here and here, and then your center, just below for the curvature. So we're going to project those two heights over here to the right hand side, or tree, if your curve is just below that. And the same thing with the points here on the center line from plan. I'm going to project them up and across. Again, they're symmetrical, so I'm just going to do the three points on the top here, project them up, and just copy it across. So that's showing the curvature of the surface as the vertical plane is cutting straight through the center here. So just a little recap on that. Basically we're projecting an end view. We project your points B and D straight across here to the right hand side. And I hope you can see, it looks like you can see that from where my camera is. And you project them up from the plan. So straight across to the edge here, up 45 degrees, straight up then from the XY line to give you points B and D. Then after that, then it's basically where your elements cut are on the surface here, cutting that vertical plane. So your two elements meet here, down here, and then the bottom point. They correspond then to the same elements in plan. So your two elements meeting here on the vertical cutting plane again, here and at the center. And they were just brought up. Again, it's symmetrical, so I only did the left-hand side, and I just projected over to the right-hand side. And that's the curvature between here and here. Lastly now, part D, draw the plan and elevation, the shortest distance between the two skew lines A, B and C, D. Okay, so A, B and C, D, as I said before, for part C, A, B and C, D are already parallel. So we just need to do one auxiliary review and it has to be perpendicular to those edges, to those skew lines. And we didn't have room on the left for the end view, so I had to do the end view on the right hand side here for part C. So preferably I'd like to go up there where there's loads of room. But instead I'm going to go down to the bottom left and I'll just adjust the camera so that we have enough room. And if not, I'll just add on another sheet. These Q lines A, B and C, D need to be projected down to the bottom left hand side here. 
you're going to be projecting from the plant, so it's an auxiliary elevation, so you get your heights in from the elevation. So I'll make sure my X1, Y1 is nice and tight to the uh, ellipse here, just so I have loads of room. Okay, so uh, I've, I'm just drawing on the board, it's quicker. Uh, on the daily exam, obviously you put a sheet on it. Uh, so this is an auxiliary elevation because you're projected from the plan, therefore we're getting a height from the elevation. So A and C are on the XY line in elevation, so they're on the XY line here. B and D are your 50 mil up, so I marked in D and B. Draw the two skew lines um, as they were connected. So it was A, B and C, D. So join A to B and C to D, and where they cross will indicate the shortest distance between the two. Where they cross, which is here, represents a point view of the shortest distance between them. So what I'm going to do is project that point back and draw the line between the two surfaces. And instead draw the plan and elevation, so then we project them up to the elevation. So I forgot that the camera's kind of zoomed in a bit in there, so I'll just recap that. Uh, once you project your auxiliary view, your auxiliary elevation from the skew lines perpendicular to them, you will show them crossing, and at this crossing point is the shortest distance between them. So by projecting that point back to the plan, and showing where it crosses the AB skew line and the CD skew line, and join them together here in orange, that is the plan of the shortest distance. To find the elevation of the shortest distance, you need to project those two points straight up to the elevation, i.e. this is on the AB line, so mark it on the AB line here. This point is on the CD line, mark it on the CD line and join them and that would be the elevation of the shortest distance between them. So that's uh, that question done. Uh, that's the first structural forms question I think I've done on the channel because it's it's kind of a construction topic and I'm, I am I'd say I prefer the engineering ones so I wouldn't know as much about this topic as I would the others so I won't be as um, confident in them as I would in the other ones so I might do one or two more there Probably, nice question it's just as long as the joining the elements and finding the endpoints of the elements is uh, is remembered so again these couple of these uh, most recent videos it's a 2h or sorry 2b pens that I'm using for the construction lines and uh, the drawing looks very messy to me there, but you know if it looks okay on the videos, then that's the main thing. So let me know what you think, uh, 2B or 2H, and as always, I hope this helped. Uh, if it did, leave a like, and we'll see you in the next one.